ಹಾಗಾದ್ರೆ doesn't let me share pictures on here yeah see now hmm. you're t- you're talking oh i, I didn't mean to yes yeah, see we're eight we're nine <laughs> seconds in and you're already talking john we yeah. try to keep this as professional as possible well then i shouldn't be here <laughs> <laughs> none of us should be none of us should be here that's yeah, yeah. john go I, back into the green room. The, the keyword was try yeah go back into the green room john what's the green room it's down the hall from the studio go out just, of the just, studio just, just over the order just go to the order of the shrimp. You'll be yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah. Just go out of the hall. Just go out of the studio, down the hall, two doors, and it's on your right. Oh, okay. There, boy. Wait, I just I came from that there. Was that the was the washroom. Where, that's where the shit is. Well, this is all on the free channel, you guys. Oh. And uh, top shelf with the peanut butter. There you go. <laughs> yeah. A minor leaguer gets his wings. Yep. I apologize to everybody in the AML Nation that's listening to this. Uh, this has started off on a, on uh, the wrong foot, but we're gonna can, we're gonna proceed anyways. Uh, Scott, I have a question for you. Okay. With that fancy new microphone you got now, can you uh, can you tell me if this is the first podcast since the last podcast? I don't know. We need to ask Bruce that. Oh, see, I'm asking you. Okay. <clears throat> the best. I can figure it is the first since the last. Now there you go. So you did there good. You go. And now you know yep. why. You know why. See, that's that's because you got that new microphone. Yeah, I would have never known that before. It, exactly. it increases your knowledge fivefold. Yeah. Wow. So uh, wow. T- so tonight uh, the the th- the surprise is gone, but we'll go ahead anyways. You know that guy. You know that TSG multimedia guy. Yes. Oh yeah. He's always making videos and stuff. Yep. Yes. I was looking on his Facebook page there not that long ago and I started and I started looking at all his stuff and I thought we got to get this guy on the podcast cuz he does a lot of really interesting stuff. And he's always hanging out with Michelle Kempema and then I saw that he had gone to Bob uh I see see that he's he's always uh, got Jack Burgess on and then today or a couple of days ago or a few days ago he's a Jim Providenza's layout and then I saw the one that really tweaked my interest was, hang on, I'm going to scroll. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. I'm scrolling. There's a picture of, uh, I want to find out what all this stuff he's doing with uh, Michelle, too. But anyway, I'm going to keep scrolling here. Somebody say something interesting while I'm scrolling. Something interesting. Yeah, something there you go. very interesting. <laughs> you guys are useless. No, seriously. Thank you. I Thank am you. really useless. You really <laughs> are. You guys are serious. I'm not Bob even Brown. sure what I'm doing here. Bob Brown, the guy that wrote the magazine uh, Narrow Gauge Gazette. Is it Bob Brown? Oh, that guy, yeah. Yeah, he was at his layout, and I thought, man, that's cool, too. So that's when I decided we got to talk to him. So that's when I... Wow, he was at his layout. That yeah, I know. Cool. Uh, here he is at Bob Brown's, uh, Tul- what is it called? The Tulum Forks layout. It was pretty cool anyways. And then he was in another guy's layout, Wayne Floyd, logging in branch. Line. So I kept, I kept seeing all this stuff and I'm thinking, we gotta, we gotta get, uh, we gotta get John on here. So that's what Some we're doing. That's narrow gauge, right? I guess. I don't know. Well, uh, that's yeah. why we're, that's why we're getting him on here. And, and for those listening, John will give us the correct pronunciation on that shortly. Yeah, exactly. There you go. Uh, so, uh, John, can you come on into the uh, green room? I mean, the studio. You're already in the green room. Uh, sure. How uh, do you how do you change rooms? <laughs> well, you uh, <laughs> yeah, open it's the all, door, it's open the door, <laughs> and the room you're in. Turn left, go down the hall until the studio is like the double doors right in front of you, and just ignore. It has that red sign that says. On air. Yeah, on air. We're recording. Does it have an icon with something that looks like a man or a woman? Uh, no. no, that's the, no, no, you that's the washroom again. Yeah, those yeah. are the washrooms. Don't go in there. there. Yeah. Just keep going in that place all the time. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, John, how, what's the pre- correct pronunciation of your name? John. Uh, J-O-H-N. There, boy. 
I got a feeling what? this is going to go really well. How about your last <laughs> name? Did you expect it to be easy? Yeah. <laughs> Uh, well, it, depend, it depends who you ask. If you have an iPhone, it likes to say Abatecola, but that's not how we say it. <laughs> we, we say Abaticola. That actually makes a lot of sense. A is the first syllable. Bat is yeah. the second syllable. Then E, then Cola, Abaticola. Yeah. It's actually pretty really easy. Really a to, cool name. It's actually pretty easy to say when you realize, when you read it that way. Yeah. We have fun with it. About a cola, yeah. I bet people just absolutely, <laughs> they absolutely I just bet you they do. slaughter I, that name. Oh my god! Yeah, I'll tell you something. Having a name like that and having it being butchered my entire life, I'm really conscientious about getting other people's names right. Yes. So yes, that's the result. That's me with my name. People constantly add an e to the end of my name, and some people you get the thing where some people think they they're telling you an original joke and they go. Wow, that's really strange. And it's like, yeah, that's only a one thousandth time I've heard that. Yeah, yeah I could see that today. Yeah, yeah today. Really. Yeah. <laughs> I have another question though. Okay. Because well, we call we, you... we prefer that you don't ask questions, but we'll let oh. let you away with this one. Yeah, yeah. People say call you Lionel all the time, like the train set. Yes. But the only Lionels I've ever known before were Lionel. So. Uh. Yeah, the way I pronounce the way it's pronounced, my I was named after my grandfather, my English grandfather. Oh, and, so it's Lionel. So it's just Lionel. Yeah. Um, I've heard uh, Lionel Messier, the famous soccer player that in South America, they pronounce it Lionel. Yeah, which that's I wouldn't the guy. say is necessarily incorrect. And people who are referring to the train sets usually say Lion L. Yep. And. Uh, I came out one time. I'll tell this story. The, the uh, great actor Lionel Barrymore. Lionel Barrymore. Yeah. So it's a it's one of those names that you can either break up the syllables and pronounce them individually, or you can just kind of do it with the Sudbury slur and go Lionel. Yeah, you name. Just drop the O right away. Just Lionel. Lionel. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. That's um, uh, so John, I I'm going to ask you. I'm going to tell you something, and I'm going to be. I want to be completely honest here. Here, one oh. thing you have to know about the AML Nation, the AML Network, is transparency is paramount. Bruce, yeah. do we not do we not try to be as transparent as possible? Absolutely, we do. One hundred percent. Yeah, transparency is paramount. However, accuracy, we're not so concerned about. Yeah. So we don't. We really. It's not, it's a it's an after. And there's a story behind that. Yeah, there's an after. We're hoping for a ballpark scale back. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, that, we're talking a big really, ballpark like in Oakland, where they got lots of space. Um, that makes it really good for me because I, I can't remember anything. So, if you want accurate stuff, uh, that won't work. Okay. So I, I I think sorry I'm I'm putting on a pop filter here. I see that. You're gonna, why you're why are you do why are you doing that? Were you spitting into yeah. the microphone or something? Oh, I never talked talk to it this close. So, oh, okay. Yeah. So I figured I, I better put the pop filter on. All right. Well, let us know when you're sound, done. It'll sound better. There we go. That's good. Wow. It does sound better. Holy macro. Yeah. Our microphone has a little bit, has a foam cover on it. So, what kind of microphone do you use? This is a Samson CO3U. Samson 30CU. I don't know. I, no, I don't recognize that. But you yeah. uh, you have a background in media, uh, like video, don't you? I have a background. Yes, I do. As a matter of fact, yep. So let me Been start doing... with let me start with what my original statement was going to be. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't really know much about you. Oh, we've okay. never we've never conversed. We've never had a conversation. We've never met anywhere. We've never really talked. So I when I started seeing all this cool stuff on your Facebook page, and I know your your TSG multimedia stuff is pretty popular. I thought. I got to get this guy on the podcast because I can find out all about him. Yeah. So that's true. And that just means you finally discovered it because it's been out there for a long time. Yeah. No, I wouldn't say I finally discovered it. I'd say for a while I was trying to ignore it. <laughs> <laughs> We're in transparency. For a while on. I was trying to ignore it. But then, uh, then uh, it was one of those things which you couldn't ignore it because you had a lot of great videos. And then uh, I saw Michelle, you were getting more and more involved with Michelle Kempema. And then I thought, you know what? I bet you this guy would be really interesting to talk to. So that's where we're at. Now we've arrived oh. at the point where I want to find out all about you. Yeah. Well, hopefully it'll be interesting. I'm sure it will be. So how, so <laughs> you have a, 
Well, how did TSG Multimedia start? Like, how long has it been going? Like, how long have you been doing model railroad videos? Oh, boy. Well, I we have to go back to 2005. Wow. So, but that wasn't a model railroad video. See, I've been doing professional video since 1998. So I've been doing video for a really long time. That's why the videos tend to look pretty good. Really good. I kind of know what I'm doing. Uh, and if I don't, I'm good at faking it. There you go. Maybe that's, maybe that's what it is. But uh, in 2005, I was looking for some kind of documentary type stuff to do. And someone who was a friend at the time suggested to do a video about trains. I'm like, okay, well, what, what do you, what, what can you do a video on about trains? Well, I live in the Bay Area. So the simple answer to that was Caltrain. That's our local commute here. They run on a schedule, so they're pretty predictable. So that makes it easy to plan. And they run every day. So if you show up someplace, you know you'll catch something. It was kind of an easy decision. And that's what happened. Did the video about Caltrain shortly after that. And that was for DVD, by the way. VHS and DVD. Yeah, yes. well yeah remember vhs yeah <laughs> <laughs> anyway uh that led to another one which led to another one and so on and so on well after after about i think half a dozen prototype railroading type dvds or vhs releases started doing model Jack Burgess. Railroad videos how to weather how to install dcc you know all that fun stuff that that started around, I think, 2010 or okay. somewhere close to that, 2008, 2010, somewhere in there. And it's kind of around the same time, maybe maybe 2012, 2013, in that range there. A friend of mine who has a YouTube channel called Coaster Fan 2105 his name is Mike Armstrong. He, as a matter of fact, uh, I only know him because he collaborated with me on a prototype DVD about Coaster down in san diego right right well he had a youtube channel that started going viral and he was making a lot of money <laughs> and he <never laughs> told me, i always thought of youtube as kind of a you know it's there for free it's a great place to host the trailers for the dvds because you know you sell dvds right and then, right then you make you know 15 bucks on each one you know whatever it is well he was making a bunch of money on YouTube. And at the time I was kind of like, well, YouTube's free. So people get what they get. And I wasn't really paying attention to, you know, really high production quality. But then he started showing that you can make money doing it. I'm like, hmm, maybe I should start focusing on that. So I started doing more YouTube stuff and focusing a little bit more on the quality at that time. So that the YouTube, because, you know, everybody has a YouTube channel and everybody has a hundred videos, but why would someone watch yours? Well, maybe if they look better or maybe if they're done better, people will watch them. That was my theory anyway. Right. And, uh, I don't know. I mean, I guess it seems to have worked. It's still nothing even remotely similar to what my friend Mike has, but it's growing steadily. And I think that's really a good thing. It's up to something like 53 or 54,000 subscribers on wow. YouTube at this point. 53.5 wow. 53. thousand subscribers. Is that I what it's at? I, I knew it's up yeah. there somewhere. I the next milestone is fifty five. Uh, I don't know. It's it's actually kind of flattering when you think it about is. it uh, to have that many people subscribed. Uh, but I mean, I also work really hard, so I, I guess I guess it shouldn't be too surprising. I don't know. Uh, yeah, and is this is this your full time gig? It is. Yeah, in twenty fifteen, I I quit the job that I had in order to focus really full time on the video production thing. And between 2005 and 2015, I was working in a sales job and actually made a fair amount of money. So I was able to quit and, you know, it's still the YouTube thing's not really paying all the bills, but it's getting to the point where it's making a dent. So, you know, I take work for hire as well. Right. Video. So, okay. Like you, you'll do, you'll do videos on anything. If somebody hires you kind of thing. Oh Yeah. Yeah, I've done a lot of weddings. Uh, <laughs> even did, even did a funeral once, but it was depressing. I was depressed for a week. <laughs> oh, I didn't even I'll know the guy. You know? <laughs> oh, did the guy <laughs> was it like? Did it start before the the need for a funeral, or you know, like it was like kind of a an action thing, you know? <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> no, 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 <laughs> no. People don't. People generally don't do that. That's that's called creating evidence. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. Well, Okay, I, I have a quick question. Uh oh. What does TSG stand for? Very high quality production. Oh, you mean the initials? Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, he's trying to be, he's trying yeah, to be funnier uh, yeah, than you, Lionel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or than, <laughs> uh, than us. A yeah. comedian. Yeah. There's a debate, actually, about that. A uh, friend of mine, some, some people listening might know uh, Chris Palomares. He used to he, work at Athern. Mm-hmm. And I was talking to him one day and he said it should stand for taco sound good. There you <laughs> so go. I was, I was thinking that taco sound good might be good. Uh, the stupid guy, uh, the, the spectacular guy. Uh, but none of that stuff is actually what, how it started. So a long time ago, back in the late mid to late nineties, my family has always had some kind of a, a business and my dad came up with this idea. You know what a Stradivarius is? Yeah, uh, a violin. Uh, an expensive stringed instrument. Yes, a very expensive stringed instrument of some type. So I guess the guy made violins. He also made guitars. And he might have yes. also made mandolins. But they're known to be the best instruments or the finest instruments in the world. So my dad came up with this idea for our business to call it the Stradivarian Group. Ah. Now you see what? TSG is it's the Stradivarian oh, group. Oh. And when I when I was starting the video company in 98, I was kind of like, I can't think of a name. You know, John's Productions, that sounds stupid. You know. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, it'll just be TSG Calm multimedia. Up. Yeah. Yeah, cuz I do audio and video and have done jeez, it's been a long time, 24, 25 years. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's that's where that came from, and most people don't know that. Well, no, well now a whole now they that. will. Yeah, now a whole pile <laughs> of people will. Yeah. yeah. Although, so. although our YouTube channel isn't nearly as strong as as uh, yours, I think we have a thousand subscribers. But we don't. I don't like. I don't. I. I. In no way do I promote my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> I only put it up. Oh, nine. We got 992 subscribers. Ooh. Wow. Hey, man, like eight people. We just need eight more subscribers. Get them to a thousand. Yeah. Let's yeah. do it. And the only reason I put, the only reason I did that was somebody insisted they wanted to listen to the free, uh, the Monday versions of the free channel. They wanted to listen to it via YouTube. And I was like, eh, that's going to be. And then I found out the guys that uh, supply, like that distribute the uh, audio podcasts i found out how basically i called got a i have a one guy that works with me at the place that i do it and uh, he says well you just got to click this box and it'll automatically go to youtube i went oh okay so that's well, how bingo, we have done <laughs> so that's no how that's why, yep that's why we have a youtube channel some one of the yeah. listeners wanted it on youtube and i found the box to click and they got it and now we have 992 subscribers as i always say to ron marsh i don't even want one subscriber <laughs> But we got almost a thousand now. Holy mackerel! I can't believe that. Um, wow. Yeah. So, okay. So then you started doing model railroad and railroad related videos, and like I see, you have this whole uh, series with Jack Burgess, who I'm assuming must live near you because he's in this like the Sacramento area or something. Or, 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 no, not Sacramento. Yeah. What's the area? There yeah, was Jack is Jack lives in Newark. It's an area, uh, it's in the Bay Area. It's about, uh, I don't know, 30 miles away from where I live. And uh, yeah, what a great guy. I mean, this guy, he's done something I, I think that most people don't really think of doing, which is modeling a very specific time and place. A lot of people do something similar, but not to the same degree that he does it. And I think he's known for that. Yeah. Well, I mean, the Yosemite and Yosemite. <laughs> Yeah, for years, <laughs> Yo- Yosemite. Yeah, for years I said I pronounced it Yosemite. Yeah, I think that's one of those things where if you've grown up or if you've been there, you know how to pronounce it. Or if you grew up in California like I did, you know how to pronounce it. I, it's just it's a weird name, really. It is a weird. It is but a weird. Name. But you just watch cartoons, you get Yosemite. Yeah, and, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah, and it is a weird name for a pasty white Canadian kid. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Although, although when you think about it, Warner Brothers did have Yosemite Sam. Yes. And that, that would be a clue to some people, I guess. But Yeah, it wasn't a clue to me. Um, yeah, that's okay. 
Uh, so yeah, you've done like a whole series with him. Like how many videos have you done with Jack Burgess? I think we're up to 24 or 25 and those have been coming out every other month for about the last three or four years. Uh, but he's running out of topics. So we're probably Uh-oh. only going to have, you know, a couple more and that'll be it. Yeah. And, so. and I see you have a video of his layout on your, uh, your website for sale. Oh, right. Yeah. That was, you know, that's the only layout to our video that we ever put up for sale. And I don't even remember how that happened. I think he wanted to have some. So he's like, here, why don't you just make a video out of it and put them up on your website? It's like, oh, okay. Uh, although, to be honest, I'm not sure why somebody would buy one if they can watch it for free on YouTube. But, you know, whatever. Some people want them. Yeah. Okay. So you got a website. So, so what you're telling me, I shouldn't click on the button that says buy now. Or it's up to you. If, you. if you want a hard copy, <laughs> yeah, if you want a hard copy, buy it from the website. If you want to watch it for free, but with stupid ads that YouTube puts on, uh, watch it on watch it on YouTube. The twenty four ninety five plus shipping may be worth it for to avoid the YouTube yeah. hassle. There you go. Not, yeah, might be worth it. How often? That's you, up to you. When was the last time you sold one of these uh, DVDs? Oh, geez, no, they trickle out. You know, there was probably an order sometime this month. I don't honestly okay. don't remember. I don't. Okay. Yeah, they're not flying off the shelf if that's what you mean. But no, I also no. don't market that at all. Right. Exactly. So what, so what is on your, on your, I'm on your website now. So like what's, there's not much on your website, I guess. eh? Oh, I don't know. There's quite a bit on there. I think. Is, is there? Okay. I don't know. I'm just, are, okay. All right. So it's, you, I, I'm on are home. You looking at tsgmultimedia.com. I, I am. Hang on. Just be patient here. I'm not, the, you're not dealing with the sharpest knife in the drawer. Um, oh, oh, okay. Um, okay. So I'm on the home page then, and there's the shop and the Blu-ray and DVDs. Oh, there's digital downloads. Look at that. Oh yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of stuff up. There. Oh, okay. So look at that. All yeah, the... There is a lot of stuff. There's like 30 videos or yeah. something, 30, 35. If you go to digital downloads, I think it's like 35 because yeah. that guy I was mentioning earlier, Mike Armstrong, some viewers of his wanted to be able to download his videos. So He's like, here, why don't you put these videos on your website and just have them as digital downloads? So I did. So those have been up there for quite some time. And some of those videos of his that are being sold as digital downloads are the ones that went viral on YouTube. So it's like, you know what I think it is really is I think it's kids. I think parents with little kids that like to watch stuff over and over and over. You know the kids I'm talking about. Well, you know what? Our very own uh, Tracy Boyd, the official flight attendant of the AML Network, her grandson, River, uh, she got two grandkids are with really cool names, River and Ozzy. Anyways, mm-hmm. uh, one day, uh, not that long ago, maybe a year or two ago, she was telling me how she and River were sitting there, uh, uh, River was stuck to the screen watching these uh, videos from Mike Armstrong, the coaster videos from yep. Mike Armstrong, and she couldn't get enough of them. And then I started watching them, and I couldn't get enough of them. Yeah, they're he very, they're job. very, very, very good. So that let's just make sure everybody understands what that is. It's Coaster Fan twenty one oh five. Wow, he's got seven hundred and fifty thousand subscribers. Oh, is that all? I thought he was up to eight hundred thousand by now. But uh, like he's it, got a video Amtrak test trains on the Lakewood subdivision and he released three days ago. It's got 22,000 views. Yeah. Well, that's that unbelievable. Nice? Wow. Wow, man. Oh man. Uh, can I ask you a question, John? Uh, you just did. Can I ask you another one? You just did. <laughs> we can, we can do this not. all day. <laughs> yeah. You know, I've watched a few of your, your interviews and uh-huh. I know he should try to be as funny as me. And I'm that's, that actually is starting to annoy me. I, I tried to be funny. Yeah, well, that's what it seems like. Maybe, or maybe you're just goofy. I, I'm pretty goofy, so it uh, might just be me being me. Now, what was the question? Now I can't remember what the question. Oh yeah, now I remember what the question was. <laughs> um, be no, I'm looking at this coaster fan guy, and I'm looking at your channel with fifty three thousand subscribers. And I mean, your channel is more. I would say it's. I would I would I be able to say it seems to be more towards the model railroader? Would that be a fair assessment? More than Mike's, yeah. Yeah. yeah, for sure. For sure. I, I have a, a three, three pronged approach, if you want to call it that. Model railroading is one of them. Obviously, that's a great topic. Prototype railroading is another one. And then historical preservation or documenting history. Those are the three things I focus on. And that became almost kind of a mission statement about three, three or four years ago when I finally kind of 
because, you know, you, you kind of shotgun it. You know, you do this and you do that. You do a little bit of the other. And you're kind of like, well, what am I really doing? And I thought, you know, looking back at what I have done and looking back at the things that I really liked and like to do, those were the three things that that came up. And, and of course, you know, all of it has, it, it all fits in with having fun too. So, because, you know, if you're not having fun, you're not doing things right. So. Yeah, well, that's for sure. Does that, does that answer the question? What was the question? I never got around to asking you the question. Oh, oh, oh geez. Well, that was a good answer. Yeah, it was I a great never, answer. It was a great answer. <laughs> yeah, I, don't, I have the answer to this a question. This is like Jeopardy. He's ask. giving you the answer. Now you got to come up with a question. Yeah, the question yeah. is, what approach do you take to making your videos? Do you just, uh, is it scattered or do you have you focused oh. in on like a three prong approach? There you go. <laughs> <laughs> there I think you go. Answered that question. Yeah, there you go. So my question yeah. is, based on what your friend Mike is doing and what you're doing, like, does this hobby seem to you to be way bigger than people realize? Um, I don't really know how to answer that. Well, the best way to answer it is to speak in directly into the microphone and yeah. move, and move your lips and. Uh... <laughs> I need to make a voice though too, because if I just move my lips, it'll just kind of—it doesn't work. Uh, wait, right. hang on a minute here, uh, John. Can you just hang on a minute, uh, uh, Bruce and <laughs> we need uh, to talk. Yeah, Bruce and <laughs> okay, and Scott huddle, and I are going to huddle, huddle over here in the corner. Huddle up, boys. Yeah. All righty. All right, uh, we got another hour and a bit to go with this. Is this is? Yeah. I, I got a feeling I'm going to need. Are we going to need some Advil or something before we get to the end of this? Yeah, uh, oh, the Tylenol boy. threes. <laughs> Tylenol yeah. threes. Oh, Tylenol boy. three with the codeine in them. Yeah, yeah the good stuff. <laughs> yeah, okay, we might have to blitz a bit. We might have to yeah. rely on the the linebacker blitz. There you All go. right, on three, break. Break. All right. Uh, hey, don't, John. Don't make, yeah, don't they make something called Midol or something like that? I, I were you? Oh, were you geez, listen, were listening? Were you listening? Were you? Did you? Were you? Did you come over to our huddle and listen? Um, no, no, no. What no. A I was over here with me. Uh, so, John, uh, me for me personally, I've been doing my podcast now for eight years. Don't know if you've ever heard of the podcast. It's called The Modeler's Life. Uh, we oh, obviously boy. managed to get you on here. Um, for me, what I think I've discovered in the eight years that I've been doing this, that this hobby seems to me to be way bigger than I ever realized that it was when I was just a model railroader. Uh uh, do, do you get any sense of that? Like, it seems to me like there's just too many people to talk to and too many subjects to cover. And well, yeah, I, I, there's no shortage of interesting people. That's for sure. And I don't think there's a shortage of interesting topics either. Now that you mention it. And I'm really, really lucky to live where I do because there are a lot of people here, you know, Jack, Bur you guys mentioned a bunch of them, all these guys that you mentioned, Jack Burgess, Bob Brown, you didn't mention Dave Adams, but he is also one of these guys, Jim Providenza. All these guys are Seth Newman. All these guys are really into model railroading uh, operations, which I've been getting into a lot. Operations is a lot of fun. And it seems like everyone knows each other, at least in this area. I think most, most people around here, you know, that's what's that degrees of separation thing people talk about? Seven degrees of separate yeah. degrees of separation or something. I, I think in the model railroading community, there's maybe two degrees of separation max because everybody knows somebody. And I was just, you mentioned Wayne Floyd. This is a guy that I had never met before, but he and I know all the same people. So it's, it, it's weird that way. It's kind of a, a connected community. So I th and and the other thing that's interesting to me about it is that a lot of those connections also cross over into historical preservation and a lot of those cross in over into historic restoration, you know, steam engines, narrow gauge stuff. Uh, so I'm not sure that that's what I mean. I'm not sure how to answer the question because there's not really I don't know what other people think. All I know is that the more people I meet the more interesting it gets. Well, and I, would, I, have, I, I wasn't asking you what other people think. I was asking you what you think. Well, no, but you said the way you phrased the question was, is it bigger than people think? And I, I don't really, oh, okay. I only, know, yeah, I only know what I think. And I kind of come at things, not assuming much. That, that's one of the things I always try to, to not assume much because when you assume stuff, you're, you're limiting your discovery. I, I don't know if that makes any sense, but, or your ability to discover things because you just assume something. 
Right. And so it's hard to, to qualify or to quantify it. Like, what, what do people think? I, I mean, I know a lot of people think that the hobby's dying, but no, I that, think that we don't it, have yeah, that. We don't have that discussion on here anymore. That's no. not, yeah, that, yeah. that's not true. It's just, that's so far from the, that's an old discussion that doesn't exist anymore. Right. Yeah. It's an old discussion that I found has been going on for a long time. There was some article from, I think model railroad or back in the fifties. And that was the topic of the, of the, article like wow they were thinking this 70 years ago okay yeah okay. model railroad has been dying ever since it really got off the ground in 1933 34 so yeah so you know i so yeah i does that answer i don't know if i answered your question or not but i it's it's hard it's it's hard to put, get a pulse a, a finger on the pulse of of that uh i i think it's as big as you keep as long as you want to keep looking it just expands maybe, maybe that's the right answer or the that's my final answer yeah, that's my final answer. <laughs> How do you think okay. he did on that one, Scott? Eh, so what I'm hearing is big as you want it to be. Uh, wow, yeah. nice analogy. Yeah, yeah, it's as big as you want it to be. You just keep right. looking and keep discovering and keep learning stuff. Well, it's exactly. a lot big. Oh, maybe we should put the. Maybe I should say it's a lot bigger than I ever imagined. Let's put it that way. There you go. Sure. Is and it... you know, coming. Sorry, go, Lionel. No, go ahead. No, I was going to say coming at it from an un unassuming point of view as i do i'd never had a limit you know i never thought of a limit on it so i don't i i don't know i, I guess that's just it's a matter of how you approach it i guess and i think it's it is uh as big as as you as long as you keep looking it, it keeps expanding so have you always been a, are you one of those guys like pretty typical been a model railroader since you were a kid or no as actually as a little kid, I really liked trains. I, I didn't even realize this until within the past couple of years. We had some old slides that my parents gave me. They said, here, you can use scan these. I had no idea what was on them. So I scanned them all. And there's pictures of me as a kid, two years old, on my second birthday with a train around my birthday cake. And then that same year, I had a big some kind of a steam engine that ran on the floor. You know, you put batteries on it and it does that thing where it bumps into the wall and backs up. Right. Uh, I remember yeah. that, but I didn't remember having those as a little kid, but I do remember as a little kid, anytime we would go driving somewhere, I would see railroad tracks that we would come up to and I would look down the tracks and look for a light. And if I saw a light, I'd beg my parents to turn around so we could watch the train go by. I remember that. I remember riding Amtrak when I was a little kid. My my parents put me on something, some kind of Amtrak train, I think from Stockton to Oakdale. I don't know if you're familiar with, with uh, California's geography, but that's out here. It's about a 45 minute trip, maybe. Right. And I remember just really enjoying that. And they let me go by myself. You know, I always joke. I say, well, they were putting me on the train or trying to get rid of me, you know, hoping <laughs> they wouldn't have to pick me up. You know, just, Maybe the train would just keep driving, you know. But, uh, so how old were you when they put you on this train? I was about probably eight or nine. Yeah, they like were that. trying to get rid of Yeah, you. they were trying to get rid of you for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Don't kid yourself. <laughs> yeah. But there was another thing that, that came back to me as as I was thinking about growing up. You know, I, I always liked trains because in fourth grade, I went to school at a place out in the country and there was a track that went right by the school. And there was a local that came out there from a, a railroad called the Stockton Terminal and Eastern. And you could hear that horn from the classroom. And somehow I was allowed to go in fourth grade. If, if we heard the train horn, I was allowed to leave the classroom and go watch the train go by. Nobody else did. I, I don't wow. know. You know, they probably thought I was that weird kid, you know, and I probably was. But yeah, it's only, it's only John. It's okay, kids. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, no what I'm I think we all went to school with one of those kids. Well, I, I was him. There you go. <laughs> but, uh, after that, I, I got into music and then I got into bands and playing music. I started playing drums and I played that, did that professionally until the 90s. And I kind of lost track of trains for a while until 2005 when I got back into doing videos about trains. So it was kind of a weird route. You know, I had model trains, I guess, electric train sets as a kid. I remember my parents went to Italy and they brought back some Italian trains which was interesting because that was stuff that we never see here because our tra the trains in Europe look a lot different than the trains we have here. Right. And uh, that led me to wanting a Tyco set, which, you know, that looks more like what we have here, but 
I've still never seen anything that resembles the Silver Streak. If everybody knows what that is, Tycho. Silver Streak, I think it's like a loose interpretation of a GP20 or something. I don't know. But anyway, um, so I, or maybe it's an Alco. I don't know, but it, it's more of a, of a US prototype or North American prototype. And it's Tycho, so it's very crude. <laughs> you know, I still have it. Oh, well, I'm uh, make Tony Cook upset. Yeah, don't be yeah, calling it. Yeah, would, Tony Cook wouldn't be too happy with you. No crude. crude, not yeah. crude. Oh well, well Tony's oh, well. pulling out the last of his good hair right now. Yeah, well, I mean, if if Tony doesn't understand Tycho's crude, maybe he doesn't understand what crude means. Jeez. Oh, <laughs> 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 bring Tony on for a rebuttal here. Yeah, yeah, uh, bring him on. Bring him on. Uh, we better. Uh, we better. Uh, uh, you know uh, what yeah. happened last time? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We <laughs> went off the ditch and off into the ditch. And, off the rails, down the ditch, and into flames. Yeah, right? holy mackerel! Yeah. You, uh, to, uh, if Tony doesn't know it, man, oh man! Mm. <laughs> the, 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 guy, the guy was literally. <laughs> Got the website on Tycho. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. No. No. This I know. Is, this has got. This has gone really dark really fast. It I has. Know Tony's uh, a big Tycho do, do you want me to give out the email address? Now? Yeah. <laughs> mm. Yeah. Tony Cook. In case you don't know what our email address is. Yeah. Exactly. I don't. Yeah. Th- well, Tony uh, Tycho. Yeah, but uh, Tony loves to. Uh, Tony is our Tycho expert. Mm-hmm. We. You yeah. know what? We just don't ever say that out loud. I have Tycho. Do you? Yeah. I've got Tyco. That was my first train set. It's sitting right here. My, Why do you still have your first train set was Tyco, and I decided to uh, kit bash the low nose GP20 and make it into a high nose thing. That shell still around somewhere, and uh, I got to I repainted some of the cars. They, they they're all kicking around. all the stuff I had kicking around somewhere. Mine's yeah. a Pennsylvania Plymouth there with you. a uh, Jack Frost tank car and a reading gondola and a reading caboose. Well, Still you know, got it's, it. you know, got it's it very, when I was four years old. Well, you know, it's very crude. It is crude. That's why I have it. <laughs> <laughs> it's but, the crudeness. Uh, uh, did, uh, did somebody else think of something to say? <laughs> well, I, I got to get... say, my, 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 mine, mine had a, a CN GP20 and a CN caboose, and I had a city service tank car, <laughs> uh, a Cons uh, meat reefer, a uh, Holly sugar hopper. Yeah, and, the big set. And then there was a, I forget who what the road name on that was, the flat car with some uh, three pieces of culverts uh, sections on it. Right. Um, you, you have, you had Tony Cook on your, on your, uh, what do you call it? A podcast? Oh, yeah. I, I've had, Can I, we... I might have, you know, I, I've been thinking about this. I might have the longest continuously running podcast model or train related podcast out there. Well, I think we need to clear something up. Yeah. This would be a good place to start where we could try to clear this up because we've had to kind of had an ongoing an ongoing uh, problem with uh Ken Patterson who we for affectionately refer to as simply the dude. The dude, yeah. Yeah. Um if it's video, how can it be a podcast? Well, that's a video podcast. There's such a thing as a video podcast. I don't think there is. I yeah. think because you know, podcast implies is made to be heard on a, the, the original Apple iP- iPod or something. Yeah, exactly, yeah. that's what it was the original, which, which was not video by any means. Of the no, word. oh, I have an iPod that has video. The original yeah. ones did. The original yeah. ones did. Yeah. yeah, I think you've. Well, I think you've stepped over the line again. I don't think I have because my <laughs> podcast has been an audio podcast since 2010. I just happen to do it in video form too, and I've been doing that since about. I don't know, 2013, 2012, something like that. Making videos is hard work, isn't it? Oh, yeah. It's a lot of work. And if you have fun with it, it doesn't seem like as much work, but you're still tired at the end of the day. Sure. And how long would it take you? Like, okay, let's just, and who's Willie? I see these Wileys. Is it Wiley? I see Wiley's wanderings. Who's Wiley? John Wiley. He's, yeah. he's part of your group. Is he? Yeah, yeah, but he's out here, though. I don't know how active he is, but I know he listens to your show. Well, there you go. Well, I don't know every single person that listens to my show because it's in the multiples of thousands, so I don't really know everybody that listens to it. Yeah, well, you know the ones that count the most. Well, really, the only ones I know are there's Bruce and there's Scott and there's uh, get the Queso Cowboy and we Mr. Fitness and Hard Part, and we know those guys. And then then we know about the 50 other people that came to our... That's our picnic, <laughs> yeah, our picnic. <laughs> um, okay, so all right, I should I should get a hold of Wiley and interview him then on the on the show. 
Yeah, you'd like him. He's a great guy. Um, but what are Wiley's wanderings? Well, that's my friend John Wiley. He uh about four years ago, yeah, 2018, four and a half years ago. I've known him longer than that. I've known him probably six or eight years, but about about four years ago, he went on a trip to something called Sound Rail. That's one of these OPSIG trips, right? Where people fly into the Pacific Northwest and they go around and operate on layouts for like three or four straight days, right? Right. And while he was there, he called me up or sent me a text or something. He's like, hey, you know, I could take some pictures and some videos of these layouts if you want, and maybe you can make a video out of it. I'm like, okay, cool. Uh, sure, do it and see what happens. You know, we'll see if we can do something with it. So he did. And that turned into four episodes of Wiley's Wanderings. It was one episode per day for the four days he was up there or the four different layouts that he saw. And then about, it was the, earlier this year, because, you know, we had something in between all this called a pandemic where nobody was going out to do anything. But And what was that all about? Did, what, what was that all yeah. about? Yeah, finally they did another sound rail here this this year, and he went again, and he's like, hey, I'll do another video. Because I, I don't know, I mean, it turned out well. The first one turned out well, and the second one turned out even better. So this past, I don't know, a couple months ago, he and I both went to something called SoCal Ops, which is basically the same thing, only it's in Southern California. So we operated on four different layouts, and... It's still his show, but I took a bunch of pictures and a bunch of video that we included in there. And then he's he's still the host, though. So he still got the whole narration and all that stuff. And uh, turned out good. I mean, people seem to like that because you're looking at other people's layouts and he gives feedback, you know, what it was like to operate there. Uh, maybe, maybe he saw something on the layout that was something he hasn't seen before that works really well. Uh, or maybe just something that was really cool. Like, uh, for example we saw an interlocking tower on a layout down there from a guy named Mike Osborne. And Mike Osborne's actually a really interesting guy. He works for UP. He's been working for, well, he started out working for SP and he's been working that same job for 45 years or 47, some, some long number like that, decades, decades. So he has this layout and on his layout, he has an inter interlocking tower and the way you control the interlocking towers controls is with these levers that are just like the levers you would see in an interlocking tower, but they're scaled down. So that's an example of something that John saw. And if you watch that video, he mentions it. He's like, you know, this, this was something I've never seen before. And this is really cool. I'd like to figure out a way to have a layout that I could have this on my layout. So it's, you know, just picking stuff up like that, uh, talking about clever designs in the layouts. Like uh, there was another layout that we operated on. Uh, that was an SP layout over the uh, Cascades in Oregon. That's an N scale layout by a guy named Jeff Abbott. And Jeff has a really clever design where when you, it's point to point, but it's really a big loop. So when you get to your termination point, the train leaves the layout and goes through a tunnel around a curve and comes out basically back where you started. So it's a self staging uh design right and that's clever so he has these big long trains that never get taken apart for for the through traffic and then of course you know he has other local stuff where you get to do the fun switching and all that all that kind of stuff but it's it's things like that that you see and you're just like well this is kind of cool and that's you know, our they, that's yeah. our buddy uncle dave abelis his uh his staging is through staging his trains just keep on going and going yeah, that's, very, that's very, a clever design. Very, very cool. Um, yeah. uh, so, John, going forward, you may not you may not think this, or you may not want to assume this, but me, I'm speaking personally, but I think you could stick this in your back pocket and we'll carry it around with you. I'm telling you, this hobby is way bigger than anybody else thinks. This yeah. hobby yep. is huge. Yep. It's, it's yeah, absolutely he just proved it right there <laughs> exactly talking all sorts of things that uh, that nobody's ever even heard of you know yes tons and tons of stuff so you make so i see you have a patreon channel what would be on that that people would be interested in oh the patreon was started back in 2018 and that's really just kind of supplement things you know how that works because i know you have patreon right and what's different about patreon well 
I made it so that people who sign up at certain levels get stuff. So, you know, like a mug, coffee mug with TSG <laughs> on it a mug. Uh, or a shirt, right? You can get a shirt. Uh, sometimes there's one person I know that's a great, who's become a great friend who got a hat. It's the only one in existence. Wow. Custom. Yeah. It's unique, right? What's the, but what's the friend's name? Does he have a name? Yeah. We call him Murph. Oh, Murph. Murph got a hat. Yeah, Did you hear that, guy. guys? Murph got a hat. Yeah. Murph got a hat. Wow. wow. Murph yeah. got a hat. So if you're, if you're really special, you get a hat. Wow. But, uh, <laughs> we got, but, we got, so, we got people that have hats. They have hats and they have a little Fred on them and everything. We have an, yeah. we have an official mascot. Hey, I bet yeah. you that's something we got that you don't have. We haven't actually having a mascot. <laughs> yeah. We don't have any mascot. I think I'm the mascot. Oh, are you? Yeah. Yeah. I think, I think it's me. Okay. Yeah. But to answer your, the rest, the rest of the answer to your question is people that are on Patreon get to see everything that's going to come out. That's a, what I call a feature presentation. Those come out on Saturdays. Right. They see they see them ahead of time. So, for example, uh, let's see. We're we're in August now. So there's an episode of Model Railroading with Jack Burgess that's coming out, I think, this weekend. And the people on Patreon got to see that about two or three months ago when it was recorded and edited. So in addition to that, the programs that get posted for patrons are in 4k whereas i don't think anything else on my channel is in 4k and the other cool thing about the patreon thing is that all the uh, videos that get posted to that are also ad free so people don't have to sit and watch those annoying ads oh okay yeah so it's sneak sneak peeks of really high quality stuff long before everybody else gets to see it and okay. people seem to be happy with that although to be honest i've run polls on uh, patreon and the people that support the channel on Patreon say they don't care about any of that stuff. They just want to make sure that the quality content just keeps being made. So, okay. Yeah. So it's kind of cool, you know, and I don't know. I'll keep doing it as long as I, as long as the lights are still on, I'll keep doing it. So that's where we're making our mistake guys. We're not, our stuff isn't a sneak peek. It's like exclusive. And there, yeah. it could be a sneak peek to what's Scott doing now. Exactly. Yep. What are we doing now? Yeah. What's the yeah. table master up to now? Yeah, I bet you guys. I bet you. I bet you they don't have a table master, Scott. Oh no, I'm sure they don't. Yeah. No, I, I think we got the one and only. Yeah, yeah. and ours. And even, that would be me. And uh, and ours is official because he has a certificate. He has yeah. a certificate that says. Yeah. Exactly. Um. So. Uh. So you have the three different. So the, okay. So on the Patreon channel, there's nothing that no, there uh, that nobody else has access to. It's just well, that they that they get it ahead of time without commercials and stuff. Well, no, there are, there's some exclusive stuff, but I do not do a lot of exclusive videos. No, no, well, not be, a lot. Well, yeah, because I'm making videos. Like, how long would it take you to say, "All right, the, the uh, it says here five days ago you did uh, talking trains with Michelle and John, and it was two hours and twelve minutes long, and it was streamed five days ago." Like, how long would it take you to turn that into a like, is, do you just do them live and they just, boom, they go out th however they are? Or do you do, do you massage them afterwards or? No, nope. The TSG live videos, those are the streaming ones. Like what I do with Michelle every, every month. Those, right. those just stream and YouTube automatically just saves them as they happened. Okay. So those are very much uh live broadcast. Okay. Uh, well, how about, uh, how about the ones with Jack Burgess? Like how long would it take you to make one of those videos? Oh boy. Yeah, it depends on the video. Um, I'm not trying to be coy here. It really does depend. Uh, there Sometimes, like, I'll go film with him, and it takes, depending on the topic and how much he has to say about it, it'll take, you know, a half a day, meaning four to six hours of actually sitting in there recording with him. Right. And it probably takes anywhere between two to four times that amount to edit. So... I could have it done the next day if I really, you know, really cook on it. Or it might be a few days. And usually it's a few days because I, I'm pretty methodical. And I, you know, I, it's, it's interesting. I never really thought about this before. But, you know, as much of a perfection uh, perfectionist as Jack Burgess has a reputation for being right. with his modeling, I think I'm the same way with my videos. And I think that might be part of the reason why he and I work well together. 
Okay. Uh, because yeah, because he, I think he sees that and he's never really said that outright. Uh, but you know, I bet if we asked him, he would probably say something to that effect. Hmm. All right. Interesting. Yeah, we'll interesting story. Him. I went, went to do a, a video, the layout to our video of his layout. Right. And we shot the whole thing just using the lights that were in his layout room. And I stayed up really late that night. I was so excited to get the thing done because it was just an, it's an amazing layout. Uh, and I put up a little preview of it for him because there were some things about it that I wasn't really happy with. And I didn't really know him at the time. Uh, and I called him back and he's like, I, and I said, you know, I'm not really happy, completely happy with it because of, you know, and I listed a few things. He says, yeah, he says, I, I think, I think I didn't like that either. Um, uh, because it was too dark or I mean, it was something like that. And I said, you know, I, we could do it better, but it means I have to bring in lights and it would take a long time. And I'm trying to be respectful of your time. And he said to me on the phone, he says, I'm retired. Right. <laughs> so meaning, yeah, bring your lights back and let's do it right. And so we brought the lights back and did it right. And that's what's up on YouTube now, the one with the lights. And uh, boy, it really did turn out well. And thanks to his preparation, it's very it's a very dynamic presentation because he talks about history and operations and, you know, prototype operations of a, of a, of a, of a railroad that existed that he knows everything about. I mean, he wrote the book on it. So he, he did. it's a great book too. And, yeah. and, it, so, and, and he's been that way. I think I was to his layout in what's the, what's the town that where, where it's, where it is, uh, uh, you know, the, computer valley what was it what's the town what's the city that in silicon valley i silicon. think most people yeah most people think of san jose or san Santa jose Clara. yeah there was a yeah. national convention in san jose yeah and maybe 20 years ago yep and i yep. went he to that open for that and i yeah, yeah and i got to op i got to operate his layout then um does he ever yeah. mention me i don't remember <laughs> um I don't think, I don't think, think real so. hard. <laughs> Good answer. Yeah. I don't think so, but you know, <laughs> bad answer. well, that could be a good thing. Obviously make a, an impression either way. Like, yeah, that's true. Yeah, no. Wait, you're not the guy that tripped and fell over and broke that bridge. Are you? Yeah, no, no. I was you know was, about that. I was, no. Was there a guy that did that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Some guy walked in the, the layout room and, and tripped. There's a, a step down that if you're not paying attention, we, which it would be easy not to pay attention because you I walk in, you're just story, like, wow. Yeah. Yeah, well, you you can fall, and he had a, a through truss bridge that he built. It was some award winning thing that he entered into a contest someplace, and it took him six months to build it, all scratch built, you know, to the prototype. <laughs> Amazing bridge. Guy tripped, fell, and broke it. <laughs> wow! Ooh. So as long as that wasn't you, uh... <laughs> no, it wasn't me. I went with oh. uh, I went with Tony Custer and Andy Sprandio, and maybe David Barrow. Oh, and Joe Fugate. I was there with Joe Fugate, and okay. we had an operating session. It was pretty cool. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, it, it's funny you mentioned that, Lionel, because you mentioned before, you know, what it, what do patrons get? And I didn't really think about this, but recently I asked Jack, because I had never operated on his layout before a couple of weeks ago. Right. And I said to him, you know, it's like, well, you know, I know this layout so well. We've done all these videos about it. I'd like to operate some someday thinking that, you know, maybe one of these days on a sound rail or a bay rail or something, he'd sneak me in as one of the operators doing, you know, one of the easier jobs. So I'm not taking away from something sure. that somebody would actually want to do, you know? Right. And he, he said, he called me back a couple of days later and he says, why don't you just, you know, we'll, we'll do an obsession for you and your friends. So I went straight to my, I call it the TSG train crew. That's the Patreon members. Wow. And I picked people off of the Patreon page that I knew were into operations and we actually have done two operating sessions now at the Yosemite Valley Railroad, one last weekend and one the weekend before that. So I've lucky for me, uh, two of the people that were supposed to come uh, the day before yesterday couldn't make it. So I got to do another job. And my wife, who does a lot of the work around here for TSG Multimedia, also got to operate on Jack's layout. So how wow. cool is that? Yeah, that is cool. So, is there any really, it's not. Yeah. Did, did you, you didn't put any pictures of that on your Facebook page, did you? Uh, I think she did. I, I'm pretty sure she, because she does all the social media stuff. Oh, I'm does pretty she? sure she, 
Yeah, I'm pretty sure she posted something, didn't she? Oh, yeah, there it is there. Some John and some TSG Crane crew friends had a great time operating on Jack Burgess layout yesterday. Yeah. Thank you, Jack and ja Jack and Jackie, and thank you to T. Wow, look at that. That's cool. Yeah. So, so now there's, not... a, there's a question. <laughs> hey, hey, Scott, we're gonna have a we're gonna have a discussion. Okay. Can you make can you can you make notes? I will make notes. All right. Oh yeah, your wife's name is Cindy. Sydney, yeah. Like Sydney, Australia. Sydney. Sydney. Well, only with a Sydney, like as in Australia, only with a C. Yeah. And a Y. Yeah. And a Y. Oh, wait, that's right. With a C Y C Y instead of S Y. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Look at that. That's, that's a cool name. And uh Abatacola. That's a very easy name to pronounce if you break it into syllables. It's uh, not too bad. No, it's not too bad at all. Um, yeah, because here she is taking a picture of Michelle, get some professional help as John Sh She's doing, I, we got to talk to you about Michelle. And earlier you were referring to UP and SP. And for those that don't know, UP, he was referring to the Union Pacific and SP was the Southern Pacific. Um, I was going to ask you a question. What was it? It was a good one. I don't know. I guess I'm kind of West Coast centric because I assumed, there I go, I assumed something. Yeah. That people would know. People and, you were just, yeah, and you were just yelling at me about assuming stuff. Yeah, well, I guess I'm a hypocrite too. Then no, you're not. <laughs> don't yeah. be too hard. That's a little. No, that's, don't be that hard. Yeah, it's, yeah. Come on, and we don't do that, eh, Scott? See, we nope. we we are more of a southern feel to our our thing. Yeah, actually, I more think and it, more every day. Yeah, I think Scott, you're a you're you're a, a huge influence now on the on the AML network, the AML nation now because of your southern. Your southern feel. We're, there you go. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I should have the been doing back this southern time. feel. Yeah, that's like we. Yeah, the AML Nation is a laid back. Well, the the, the headquarters is in Busted Knuckle, Kentucky, so it's it's right on the right there. That's right. It's right there. down laid back country. Laid back yep. country. Um, what was I going to say? Don't tell me. Let me guess. I can't remember now. Man, there's so much to stuff. I'd like that... to operate on his layout. Yeah, I'd love that. Well, that's where the question. On that. I, that was the question I was going to ask. Let's have a discussion here, Bruce, Scott, yes, and John. Let's have a discussion here because that's something that has uh, plagued me now for about a year and a bit. Because I thought because it all started with our buddy Mike Hauk, who lives in uh, Erie, Pennsylvania, retired naval doctor, uh, has a beautiful layout. I'd like to go operate his layout, and I, I'm sure there are. And he, I think he takes five or six or half a dozen operators. And I'm sure there's other AMLers that would like to operate his layout. And I know there's AMLers that would like to operate Uncle Dave's layout. And you say you handpick people off a list. And I'm thinking, I'd hate to handpick people that go to a layout because I'd be afraid that somebody's feelings would be hurt. Well, see, and that's something that maybe I misspoke. I didn't handpick people. Oh, I, but I, what I handpicked was people that I knew were into operations and would be interested in doing it. That's the only handpicking I did. The rest of it was sign up and whoever got there first got it. Oh, okay. So one, once the email went out and I invited more people than we could, because I know, I know a lot of people that like to operate. Right. And I invited, you know, Jack's layout does four people per session. And I knew I was going to be on at least one of those out of the two sessions we had set up. So we had a total of, I think, seven slots, right? And before I sent the email out, I signed up because I didn't want to leave myself out, you know? Right. Uh, because the whole idea was I wanted to try operations on the YV. Right. And uh, I sent out this email to, I think, about 15 or 20 people. And I, I knew some of them wouldn't be able to go because they're out of state or whatever. But I knew that they liked operations and I mean, these How are the many Patreons of, do you have? Uh, I think we're up to like 110, something I, like that. I oh, think, okay. I, yeah, it's like something like that. Yeah. Yeah, hmm. 110, 109, somewhere in that range. I I don't keep track. You know, it, it changes. Why don't you Sometimes keep track? Why don't you keep track? Uh, what would the point of that be? It is what it is, and it does what it does, <laughs> and you keep doing what you do, and it'll it'll fill up. You know. Well, I keep track uh, on mine. That's for sure. You know, how uh, many do you have? Uh, 250. Oh, well, that's pretty good. That's great. And yeah. I'm not even trying that hard. Yeah. Well, Bruce no, has to remind great. me many times to make sure that we talk about it. I don't even, we're not even trying that hard. It just happens to be there. Yeah. Um, well, that's good. Yeah. Um, it's fun to have Pete, but uh, with us, it's all, you can only hear the Tuesday. We have two podcasts a week, Monday and Tuesday. 
And the only way you can hear the Tuesday podcast is if you're a Patreon. They're strictly uh, only available to the Patreon members. Oh, okay. Yeah. What kind of stuff do you talk about on that one? Uh, well, we talk about, uh, we have a, a show called The Fans, where it's uh, our regular crew of guys that we try to talk, uh, we try to make sense, but that doesn't happen that often. Like we talk about what we're doing, what events are, that we like talked about our, our model, our, our models, our, and our railroad. Railroad. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, we yeah. go through the, because it originally started as about the what well, posts on the fans page. We have a fans and AML nation fans page. And so we have well, and then we have other, we have uncle Dave's fireside chants. Mm, and we yeah. have all sorts of stuff on there. Um, Actually, we have a really fun time. Yes. It's a fun time. That's what it is. And it's officially called the nickname for that. The Tuesday channel is called the antics channel. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So see, this will be on the free channel. This will be a, an actual episode on the free channel. So people all over the world will hear this. Well, I'm really excited. I know they should be. You yeah. should be. Um, yeah. Yeah. What, uh, what is it? Uh, Michelle is doing these days or we never finished our discussion. So how do we solve that problem of who gets we invited to these operating sessions? Are you asking me? I'm asking you and I'm asking Bruce and I'm asking Scott. Oh, that is a problem. You could do what I did. We, well, we but you a... have over 150, and you said you only had like seven slots. There's, there's someone going to miss out. Well, some of them I don't know are into operations. So if you send out an yeah. email to 20 or 40 people, and you have a sign up with a limited number of spots, and they are first come, first serve, well, if it's full, it's full, right? Yeah. I mean, it's not it's not that people didn't get invited because we don't like them. It's that they didn't get to sign up soon enough. So, or it's possible that it, it's someone that I don't know is into ops. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but then I, don't, pe- I don't know everybody. People's yeah. hurling. Yeah. Well, yeah, but don't, isn't it your responsibility as the host to try to treat all your patrons exactly the same? I guess. I mean, but there are different tiers too, right? Oh, so okay. Some, some people, some people get more stuff or better stuff. If they support more, right? <laughs> well, we have two tiers where you just yeah. get the podcast or the second tier is you get a t-shirt every year. Now that's kind See? of hit and miss because I'm in charge of the t-shirts. But... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Isn't that a pain? To, it's to more like a lottery. <laughs> oh, oh, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> a lottery. I can't, keep up with, nice. yeah, I can't keep up with those rewards things. <laughs> you know, we try really hard to make sure people get their stuff. And, but no, but you know, though, well, like I was saying before, I don't think people care so much about getting stuff as <laughs> much as they care about supporting the content that they love. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> and I've never had someone. Well, actually, I take that back. It happened one time. It was really interesting. One time, a guy unsigned up. He's like, "Oh, gone," and I and so I got the email from Patreon said, "Hey, this guy unsigned up." So I sent him a, an email. I'm like, "Hey, I saw that you unsigned up. Did we do something wrong?" He says, you didn't put my name in the credits on the podcast. I'm like, oh, I didn't? And I went back, and sure enough, his name was there. And I'm like, well, that's weird. Why didn't... So I wrote back to him, and I said, no, your name's there. It's just the way... And you'll know this, Lionel. If you you do anything with the uh, lists that Patreon generates, it's alphabetized by first name, not last name. So I think he was looking for his last name in the alphabet, right? In the alphabetized list. And I said, no, no, it's it's alphabetized by first name, not by my choice, but because that's how Patreon presents it to me. And he's like, oh, I'm sorry. And he signed back up <laughs> and added a little bit more to it. I think he felt bad. Wow. <laughs> yeah. So that's the only time I've had someone, you know, complain that about something that was promised that they thought they didn't get, but they actually did. And it's kind of weird. It was kind of a weird story when you think about it. Yeah, well, I think Scott summed it up. It's kind of like a lottery here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, I think if, I think if you do your best, people probably are pretty understanding. If you fall sometimes, right? Uh, I don't know. I think if you promise people a shirt, they uh, they should expect to get it. Uh, I think I'll we're doing pretty good. One day. All right, all right, Scott, settle down. Jeez, <laughs> he, he, he's been flying fettle tonight. I know. He's yeah. sounded, he sounded really yeah. upset. Yeah, he didn't. No, I'm not. I, I just know how it works. Yeah. Well, you know what? You know what, Scott? You know what, Scott? Tell not me. getting a t-shirt 
it's kind of like arriving in a hotel to realize that everybody left for dinner like five minutes earlier. <laughs> oh, no, that's a horrible feeling. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> wow, that's horrible. Um, that's a long story, John. You don't want to get it. It's a nasty story. You don't want to get involved. Yeah, in it's terrible. Oh, okay. <laughs> and I was kind of in the middle of that. I felt so bad. <laughs> not obviously not. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, he was on the way down the highway. Yeah, yeah. he was on his way down to get some uh, vittles. Yeah. Um, okay. So what is Michelle Kempham? What do you do with Michelle Kempham? Have I not seen recently on her Facebook page that she was doing some sort of massive trip across for, was she, was that something to do with you or what was going Part, on with? Partly. Yeah. Partly. Uh, so I met her in 2019. I think it was 2019. When, when was the NMRA convention in Salt Lake city? It was 19, wasn't it? I don't know. I didn't go. Yeah, somewhere uh, around there, I think. Yeah, I think it was 19. I met her in person. I, I had known her prior to that, actually, because the dude uh, introduced me to her on a video call. Okay. Uh, a few, few years ago. And um, so we met in person in Salt Lake City. And actually, we did a show with the dude. Ah. Uh, turns out to be the last show I think she ever did uh, <laughs> with the dude. Yeah. Um, yeah there was some sort a, of. Uh... A, yeah, that's a different story, but. Um, yes, uh, 2019 was Salt Lake City. Okay. Yeah. So, so 2019, you did the last show with her and the dude together. Yeah. And we, we, um, get along really well. And so in 2020, no, actually it was later in 2019. She was working on one of the things that she and I discovered we have in common in 2019 is that we're both really interested in helping get more kids involved with model railroading. And that's because of what model railroading entails, right? You have design, woodworking, electronics, you know, history, research, everything, right? Engineering. That's important, right? Because if kids learn that stuff doing a hobby, they're going to learn stuff without realizing they're learning stuff. And that means it sticks. So we are both very passionate about youth in model railroading. And so she invited me and Sydney to Colorado and it just so happens that Sydney's, uh, my in-laws also live in Colorado. And well, they live, well, they have a place in Estes Park and they live in Kansas the rest of the time. But the point is we were going to combine visits. So, and uh, what, is also that? Just, what is Estes Park? Oh, Estes Park is west of uh, Denver and a little north. It's the uh, gateway to Rocky Mountain National Park. Oh, so, so it's, it's kind of like a vacation spot or something? Kind of. Yeah. It's a destination, right? A lot of people go there. Tourism is big in the summer and then in, in the winter, it's kind of normal for the local folks, you know? Oh, okay. So, um, we combined trips. We went out to Greeley for a couple of days and attended basically what was a seminar and Karen Formico from, uh, Walther's was there and a bunch of people that are already doing active youth and model railroad type programs were there to talk about best practices and, at the time, the NMRA was really going away from anything having to do with kids. Uh, something had happened with Boy Scouts or something just scared the hell out of everybody. <laughs> and, and you know what I'm talking about. I can tell from yeah. the laughter. No, I so, You know what? I barely do know what you're talking about. I've heard rumors of, uh, I barely do know what, what you're talking about. Something happened and then they all went berserk because, I don't know, I, I barely yeah. pay any attention to any of that stuff. Yeah, well, there's a big liability when you're doing anything that involves minors, because if something bad happens, whoever's sponsoring it can get sued their pants off. You know what I'm saying? Sure. So people are very sensitive. And the NMRA was, you know, reactive, but justifiably sensitive about that. So we thought, well, why don't we come up with something that can can be a resource that anybody can access and all they have to do is go to a website and then they'll have advice and programs and, you know, curricula and stuff like that where people can download something. And it's a whole program for something that you could do with kids to get them into model railroading. So we went to Colorado for that and ended up hanging out, you know, for a couple of days. We even did a Chasing Trains episode. Uh, Chasing Trains is a series on my channel of, well, it's prototype rail fanning. But more than that, it's just having fun with friends. You know, we can go out chasing trains, and if we don't see a train, that's fine, because we had, had an excuse to hang out with our buddies, right? That's really what it's about. So after that, um, trying to think now, we 
I saw her again sometime after that. I think we went, I think we went back to Colorado. Oh, I know what it was. It was last year. I went with my friends, Alvin and Gary to Colorado. It was part of a, what we called the Epic trip of 2021, where we went uh, to the N scale thing in, in Evanston, the Fremo N guys did the largest up to that point. It was the largest operating layout ever in Fremo N in the history of Fremo N. So I documented that, did a layout tour of that layout while we were there. We went through Wyoming and down to Colorado. I finished up the layout tour that I had started when I was there the, the time before. So I had to shoot for a day there to, to get the footage I needed. And we also did a Chasing Trains episode with Michelle. And that was cool because we got to hang out for a couple of days. Um, Anyway, then she came out here uh, about two weeks ago and she rode the Zephyr to Sacramento. And the original plan was Union Pacific or UP, if you were paying attention earlier, they decided they were going to run the big boy out to Roseville, which is near Sacramento, and then up to Portland and then back to Wyoming through Idaho. Right. Well, so Michelle and Alvin got Amtrak tickets. Alvin lives in Utah. So Michelle left the day before Alvin did on the Zephyr. Then he, he got his tra- ticket and they're non-refundable. So they're like, well, Union Pacific decided to cancel that trip, but they already had their tickets. So they came anyway. And while they were here, uh, I went out to Sacramento and stayed with a friend and we did some chasing trains for a few days. So we went to Portola, California, which is a place where the Western Pacific Railroad Museum is, where Michelle actually purchased their Run a Locomotive program. They have a thing where you can pay, I think she paid 400 bucks or something like that, and you get to run an, an engine on their on their track there, which is wow. pretty cool. And what was even cooler about it, and goes to show how nice she is, is she shared it. She let me run it for one run. She let Alvin run it for one run. Our other friend James was there. He ran it for one run, and then she took it. So we did a total of five runs and she did, she did two of them and was nice enough to let us run it uh, the other times. So how far and, do you run? Uh, how far do you run it? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I think it's about a quarter of a mile, something like that. Okay. It's just like a, yeah, it's just like a bush fish hook thing, you know, where you go out and then you come back. Uh, it's not like you're, it's not like Nevada Northern where you run it for uh, six miles out and six miles back or seven or whatever, you know, right. It's not like that, but, uh, you know, it's, it's still, it's still fun because you're operating a locomotive and that's sure. not something most, most of us get to do every day. Right. So after that, um, we went back through Feather River Canyon. So they got to see Ketty Y. They had never seen that before. That's the, uh, one of the, one of the seven or eight wonders of the railroading world. All right. Let's explain to people a little bit more what Ketty Y is. <laughs> yeah. Ketty Y is. What are this you laugh- hang on. Big- I'm, hang on. I yeah. apologize, John. What are yeah. you laughing at, Scott? I'm just laughing. <laughs> it's not about anything here. I just did something that I shouldn't have done. I, I dropped a uh, cube of brick. I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't mean I didn't mean to laugh out loud. Now you laughed understand. when I asked him to explain Ketty Y. Now come on. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> See, he did it again. <laughs> it's Ketty Y. Do okay, you know well, what? All right, yeah. Scott. Do you know what Ketty Y is? I do not. And that's what I was laughing about. I was like, that's a really good question. Oh, there you go. So you think it's okay. So you're surprised that I asked a good question. I yeah. I was like, that. I can't believe this nut ass. I mean, this guy asked the question. <laughs> yeah, does anybody here know what it is? Uh, I, 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 I know. I know. What I, it is. I have a vague idea of what it is. So it's, okay. it's a lot. Yeah. Well, okay. We don't do we, we don't live in the Rockies. We don't live on the West coast. So Bruce, I've heard Bruce, of it before, but I'm not really sure. Yes. Bruce, what the mailboy who knows lots of stuff. He's an engineer and reads lots of stuff and is a, uh, got a mind like a steel trap. He knows it. He knows exactly what it is. I have a rough idea. I believe it's a Y that's uh, built on the, one of the Pacifics and it's a Y that's built on uh, a bridge. Yeah. And two uh, legs, two legs of the Y are built on these very impressive bridges. And what is the original? Okay, now I, I do know what it is. Yep, that is cool. And what is the original railroad that that built it? That was the Western Pacific. Okay. Yeah. And it's WP. A... If you're shortening them down. Yeah. Well, I I learned my lesson about that earlier. <laughs> yeah. Well. <laughs> uh, yeah. Bruce loves acronyms. He he'll throw an acronym at you. 
Um, yeah. Do, Bruce, do you know what the WPRM is? The what's that? The Western Pacific Railroad Museum? There you go. Yeah, about, that's where we went. <laughs> how about the T, TSG Multimedia? Uh, some guy in fancy violins. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there violin you go. guy. That was a good answer. Um, T, TVG, the violin guy. Yeah, the, yeah, yeah. the Q is silent. Trying to grow Yeah, TVG. Uh, the Q is silent. Um, so anyway, is the Ketty Y in use today? Oh, yeah. Yeah. The Ketty Y is in use. Uh, that's where the BNSF runs on their own track. That's where the trackage rights end for BNSF coming up from the uh, Central Valley. Central Valley, which is uh, where? Yeah. So BNSF has trackage rights between Stockton in California and right. Ketty Y. And they use that trackage rights to get to something called the High Line. And All the right. High Line, I, I think, was a Burlington Northern thing after. You know, actually, I'm, I, I'm trying to remember now if WP went on the high line i don't think they did i think burlington northern went on the high, high line but anyway it's a we went and saw the ketty y on our way back from portola is what i was getting at there okay and they got to see feather river canyon which is another thing it's you know it's an hour long drive of this just stunning scenery down this canyon it's just massive and uh, some- yeah the ketty y oh, is uh, in plumas county california that so, sounds right uh <laughs> And it, it's joined the it, it joins the East West Feather River route inside with the inside gateway the gateway the BNSF gateway subdivision north wow. to north to town and get uh, uh, Bruce do you know what the town is that it's north the gateway division runs to uh, it's the same thing I'm reading it's Bieber <laughs> well now you're reading it too I <laughs> handed out I handed out the information to the yeah we had a handout yeah we we got a handout yeah where the where's the whiz with all the knowledge that do the exactly. handout exactly um, and does he not have the knowledge yeah and they're, okay the Y and the town are named after R- Arthur W Keddy K E D D I E who purchased the survey rights and and the right to build a railroad through the Feather River Canyon from from uh, George J Gold hmm. son of J Gold there you go all right. Very cool. Yeah. So it's a Y. Yeah. It's a Y that's built on uh, some trestles. Very cool. Seven. The Feather River route was preferred over Donner Pass route. Yeah. That's very cool. That's, uh, I think, the, isn't that kind of primarily what uh, Joe Fugate models is all that area through there, I think? No, I think he was doing something with Southern Pacific. He did the Siskiyou line. Oh, okay. Siskiyou, north, yeah. That's different. North and west. Yeah. It's north and much north and a bit west of where we're talking about. All right. All right. But, yeah. So anyway, so Michelle was out. That was the first thing we did when she was out here. We went to the uh, California State Railroad Museum the next day, and uh, that was a lot of fun. And the we moved we moved the party out to the Bay Area after that, and we went to Niles Canyon. Uh, I'm trying to remember in order. I think Niles Canyon was Saturday with a stop at the South Bay Historical Railroad Society, which is in Santa Clara. That's a group that I volunteer with, and they have, I think it might be the last Southern Pacific interlocking tower that's still st- uh, still in preservation. I think all the others have burned down or been demolished or whatever. So we got to go into the tower. That was pretty cool. Um, the next day, we went to the Western Railway Museum, which is a place out in... Well, it's at Rio Vista Junction, but it's at a place called Sassoon City. And Sassoon, you would never guess how to spell. It's one of those weird names. And we probably are mispronouncing it when we say Sassoon. It's S-U-I-S-U-N, Sassoon. It's probably Swissoon, but, or Swissoon. Yeah, I don't know. but It's it's probably French and it's been butchered into Sassoon. Yeah, probably. This is a really cool place. They focus mainly on traction. So they have all kinds of trolleys, trams, streetcars, interurbans, that kind of stuff. But they also have an old Western Pacific, well, two Western Pacific steam engines. Neither one runs, but they're there. And I think the number 94, which is an 060, I think that one is not far from being able to run if they ever wanted to, but it just doesn't. So they have it, you know, you know, I was talking about preservation being one of the three things that I focus on with my channel. I did a video about the Western Railway Museum 
and that came out just this month. I think it was last week or the week before. So if anybody's interested in seeing that, they can look on TSG Multimedia's YouTube channel and search for Western Railway Museum. You can learn about that place. Yeah, it's a cool, cool. place. Okay, oh, there uh, it is. It came out two weeks ago. Yeah, Sassoon yeah. is, uh, is pronounced Sassoon, S-E and Soon. It's a uh, Witan name for where the west wind blows, and it's named uh, for the Sassoon people who are an indigenous tribe in the oh. area. Well, there you go. And the west wind definitely blows there. It gets really windy out there at times. They have the wind farms too, right? Wind turbines out there. So, really? But anyway, yeah. um, that was really cool. And, and, you know, the thing I'm not mentioning is that every place that we went, we got kind of behind the scenes tours because I set them up ahead of time. So at the Western Pacific Museum, a, a friend of mine who actually happens to be on the TSG train crew, that's the Patreon uh, supporters, he, he was not only the guy that did the uh, run a locomotive thing for us, but we got there early and he gave us a whole tour of the place. And I'm working on a video about the Western Pacific Railroad Museum with him. So that'll come out sometime probably within the next month or two at the uh, California State Railroad Museum. We actually got to, and this, this is something that doesn't happen for, you know, very often for anybody is we got to see the old Southern Pacific shops out there. That's not something that's normally open to the public. So it was, yeah, it was. And then we got a, a behind the scenes tour by their, I'm trying to remember. She, a really nice lady, Kim uh, Whitfield, I think was her last name. I think I'm remembering that properly. And she's, she does the exhibits. Like she designs the exhibits for the, uh, California State Railroad Museum. So that was really cool. Now, is that we, where the NMRA uh, exhibit is as well? It is. Yeah. That's exactly where it is. And so we went and looked at that too. What's that, uh, like? I had, What's that like, the NMRA exhibit? That's a really cool exhibit, actually. I think they did a good job putting it together. Um, it's So when you walk into it, it shows you a garden scale. Really, it's an F scale bridge, 1 to 20.3. And it also has an N-scale version of basically the same bridge. So you get a, get a sense of, immediately of scale and gives people an idea of, you know, this is about scale models and not toy trains, right? Because they have a toy train exhibit too, which is very toy train, you know, Lionel and, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, American Flyers. And, and, Tyco, flyers. and Tyco and so. You know, I don't remember seeing Tyco, but is it, in any case. Is it, uh, is it crude? No, no. Most of, most of the stuff in the museum is better than that. So that sounds I mean, like I, that I, was one heck of a trip. Yeah. Oh, it was. And I oh, I didn't even tell you all of it. That was just the first couple of days. Um, really? So where so where does Michelle fit into all this? So are you making a video about her trip or something? Why was she doing this exactly? Well, that was a trip that we had planned because we were going to chase the big boy up to Portland. Oh, okay. They they canceled that. So we made the most of it since they had re non-refundable tickets. Right. And you're so. making, and you're making money off of all this or what? Uh, I'm asking. Yet. Well, no, I'm just asking. So, so how your source of income is from Patreon and from the YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. And based on the ads, they the ads that are on the, the YouTube thing. Is that how it right. works? Right. Huh. Uh, okay. Huh. Yeah. For every ad that somebody watches, you get some small portion of a penny, <laughs> but it adds up, you know, I mean, if you get, if you get to the uh, Mike Armstrong level of things, it really adds up. So, okay, cool. Yeah. So you're but probably, yeah, you're probably pulling in two, 300 grand a year from this thing then. Oh yeah. Oh no. That's <laughs> more like two or 300 million. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, wow. he, he's yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. 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 He's got a jet, Lionel. I, I, make a lot of money. <laughs> yeah. I, I make a lot of money doing interviews too. Do you? Did, did you get? Yeah, yeah. You didn't get the bill. I yet? forgot to tell you, Lionel. <laughs> <laughs> I had to pay him. Oh, yeah. you had to pay him because usually they have to. You have to pay us to get it released. Yeah, no, <laughs> but this guy he wanted it up front, and I oh, said, "Well, it? okay." Yeah, you're the table yeah. master, not the paymaster. I know. I said I'm way out of my. Uh... <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, <laughs> did I tell you, Scott, about the time I got to the hotel and? Everybody left five minutes ahead of time. Oh, I know. I know way too much about that. Maybe they heard. I you can't were sleep at night. Even <laughs> thinking about it. What was that? What was that, John? I said maybe they heard you were coming. Yeah, I think that's pretty much what yeah, happened. They knew he was coming. All right. Yeah, that's, that's usually what happens. Usually, what happens to me 
Yeah, that's pretty much, I think, what happened. Absolutely. <laughs> you, you can't blame them. Um, yeah. uh, it, boy, I'm exhausted. Well, that's going to be, that's a gift that's going to just keep, keep on, on giving. giving. <laughs> the whole year yeah. round, Clark. <laughs> yeah. We're going to never let that one down. <laughs> uh, boy, John, I, you. what's that? I said, I can't much blame you. Uh, um, John, you're an interesting guy. I was, what was Bob Brown's uh, layout like? Tulum, how do you say that? Tulome Forks, Tulome. Oh, Tuolumne Forks. Yeah. Tula, oh, Tuolumne. I wasn't even close tu on that one either. Tu Tuolumne. Tu it's Tuolumne. Just like, just like it yeah, looks. It. Just like it looks, yeah. Yeah. It, that's a really interesting layout. So and was that the first time you'd ever seen it? No. No, I had seen it a, about three weeks prior to that. Because my friend Dave Adams, who's a narrow gauge guy, and he's also a prototype guy. Like I, I see him everywhere. And you, you heard about the Great Western Steam Up they had out here in Carson City? No, I did not. I was. I don't live anywhere near Carson City. Oh, that's the one yeah. that Pinellas was down at. Oh yeah, right. And they had those. Oh, the old, old one. Oh, old that. Thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I remember that. Yeah, well, sure. your truck. I know Adam went to the Victorian Iron Horse Roundup last year. I saw him there. Well, maybe that's uh, what I'm thinking about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I didn't see him at the Great Western Steam Up. Okay, I was, I was thinking about the Victorian one that he was. No, the Victorian yeah. one that was at uh, wasn't that at uh, Cumbers and Toltec or something or yeah, the other it place? Was. Yeah, there it was. Go. As a matter of fact, there is an episode of Chasing Trains that features some of that when we were there last year. So, oh, yeah, if you're in, yeah. If you want to see that, there's also a video coming out. Um, hold on, let me tell you when it is. It's actually two weeks from, or a week from this coming Saturday on, what is it, the 30th? I can't see without my glasses on. <laughs> hey, Bruce. That's, hey, that's going to yeah. be trains. Hey, Bruce. What's, yeah. the, what's the date of this coming Saturday? Uh, whichever the one is showing up when you release the thing, I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, the thing you have to understand about the AML Nation is it's always uh, last month, at least. Yeah, we're 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 on a big uh, time delay. Yeah, we're saying. on a permanent time delay. <laughs> you heard of the seven second tape delay? We got like the seven week tape delay. Yeah, what's October? Well, what's October like uh, there in California where you live? Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah, well then the, that's yeah. basically when the podcast is coming out. Yeah, it's really nice here in October. Okay, well uh, then this podcast is perfectly timed then. It would be great. Perfect yeah. time. Uh, it will yeah. it will enhance the October experience. Yeah, it'll enhance your yeah. October experience. Okay, so anyways, this uh, your video is already coming. It's already been out for a couple of months. Let's say that. Yeah, if there's if this is really coming out in October, this came out back in January thirtieth. It was steam trains on the Coombers and Toltec, and it includes some of those what they call the painted ladies. It had the uh, Eureka and Palisade number no. four, which right. is just gorgeous, and the Glenbrook, which is also just gorgeous. As well as other regular CNT uh, scenic railroad trains. So, but yeah, um, I saw Adam at that, and he, you know he probably went to the Great Western Steam Up, but I was only there on the first day of the event, and it went for four days. So there were a lot of people that I did not get to see who went on the days I wasn't there, and I'd be really surprised if Adam did not go on one of those days. I'm, I'm telling you, this hobby is way bigger than anybody thinks. Yeah. Well, if you get into the other stuff too, right? Because some people are just into model railroading and you probably limit yourself a little bit. But when you start branching out into prototype stuff too and start branching out into narrow gauge too and start branching out into traction and, you know, name it, bridges, whatever. I mean, there's, you can get into anything. There's special interest groups for almost everything. Uh, so what was the answer to the question? Uh, something about, uh, what was that? So how do you asking me about Bob Brown. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. I'm surprised I remembered. So yeah, Bob Brown. <laughs> well, we were Brown, hoping you because we'd forgotten. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I, we, we got lucky because I usually don't. So, uh, but anyway, uh, he's a builder. And so his layout is like, it's not just a layout. It's a whole bunch of little layouts that are kind of not even really connected to each other. Okay. And hmm. the That's model interesting. Model, yeah, the modeling on because he doesn't run anything, right? He's he's not an operator. He's a builder, so he doesn't care about operations. And his layout is really a series of vignettes. They're scenes of people doing things or interesting buildings. All of his buildings have interiors, and most of them don't have roofs or sides, so you can see right in. And 
he's very well known for what he calls clutter. And that's all the stuff, you know, tools on the benches or tools falling out of open drawers on a workbench inside a, a shop or things like that, you know, or chips where the machine shop was running and you can see all the stuff on the ground, right? All the wood chips or the, or the uh, metal chips where the machine tools are, are building things. It's, it's just remarkable. And he has all kinds of scratch, everything scratch built. I mean, it's, uh, you know, you walk into the, the room and you you just don't know what to look at because everywhere you look, it's an amazing scene. You know, so, I know a guy, I know a guy that builds, like he built a, an engine house for his layout and he builds the frame stick by stick. So like, I mean, if yeah. you look, if you saw the frame of this building, it would be an exact replica of what the building, how a building would be framed. And then yep. he covers it up. So, I mean, the guy literally builds the entire structure the way it would be built in in uh, prototype in the prototype world. It's pretty cool. It's very cool. Yeah. It's very cool Bob, to see. His yeah. bubble's a little off center, but he's a nice guy. Yeah, he's, <laughs> well, he's a very Bradley troubled Hunter. person. Yeah, he's a very troubled person. <laughs> okay. And he and he and he, he he struggles with his micro. He forgets to plug in his microphone sometimes. <laughs> and on top of that, he does it in S scale. And then he does it in S scale. Yeah, yeah. And he models this, and he's from the he models this Greenville and whatever it's a Greenville Northern, Greenville Northern, right? Yeah. Um, way down south. Way down south in Greenville, South Carolina. We're talking about there our. You go. We're talking about our. You know what? One of the most talented models you will ever meet in your life, uh, John, is our very own Scott uh, Lister, right? Who, who's, who's been with yeah. us the entire time. I never met a guy with so much talent as this guy. He he can build spectacular model railroads. He can restore cars. He can build houses, actual houses. This guy can build anything. He's one of the most talented modelers I've ever seen. That's what, Have you ever decided to like go east and make a trip east and start videotaping other layouts? You know, it, I've wanted to, but remember we were talking earlier about Patreon and right YouTube not not really paying the bills enough. So it's not in the near future at this point, just because it's kind of unaffordable to travel right now. Okay. But I could definitely see it happening in the next 10 years. And I know that there are a lot of people. I mean, I've branched out as far as... I guess Utah. I have done some layout tours in Utah. Well, I guess. Well, I guess I'm going to do a layout tour when I go to Colorado next week. So I guess I will. I can say I've branched out as far as Colorado. I did the layout tour of the Colorado Model Railroad Museum. So okay. I guess that counts. Well, they're so from I Michelle. Am getting, yep. Yeah. yeah. So I am getting out there. There's a bunch of people in Southern California that have been after me to go down there and record a bunch of layouts. So you know, I mean, it'll happen and. It's I'm just sure. way bigger than we ever thought. I'm telling it you, is, this, yep, this yep. hobby is bigger than anybody knows. Yeah, you, you won't unbelievable. You, it is. It's uh, yeah. That's what that's what social media has done. It has brought that made this hobby is like poured water or gasoline on a fire. It's just exploded. This. Yeah, have you ever heard the expression, John, that this hobby is going to explode and we're all going to be covered in model railroad goo? Yeah, no, I think I saw something on, on a shirt or something like that. Oh, okay. No, that was probably mustard. <laughs> yeah, that was a hot no, dog. You might well, want to let... I was going to uh, ask you about the hot dogs. What's what's the hot dog thing? What about the hot dog <laughs> thing? What about the hot dog thing? Yeah, what, what's yeah. the hot dog what, what have you heard? Yeah, what have you heard? What What do you mean, what I, hot dog? I see the hot dog stuff. Hot dog stuff. You guys play hot dog games. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> you want to know how that started? <laughs> <laughs> I want to know about the hot dog games. Yeah. You want to know? You, 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 know you can know. buy a hot dog shirt from Webmaster Swan or wherever, but we'll and talk about that later. And the instructions are in the box. <laughs> yeah. You want to know how that started? You really yeah. want to know how that started? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Bruce, would you like to know how? You have a rough idea of how it I started. I have a rough idea. Do we need to kind of go into the uh, the music that fades back into the, you know, like on TV there? Yeah. <laughs> So how this, how it really started was after I was diagnosed with cancer, stage four cancer, I was feeling very uh, depressed and uh, down. And uh, one day I went into Costco. I don't know why. It was very early on. And I went into Costco and I saw that you could buy. Uh, I had decided I was going to post on Facebook, start counting up all the days that I survived on, on Facebook because I didn't think it'd be more than about 240 based on what they were telling me originally. And I went into Costco 
And there was, uh, you could buy a hot dog and all the soda you could drink for $1.50. And I thought, wow, I never noticed that before. And I sat down with my hot dog and my Diet Pepsi and I took a photo of it. And it seemed to make, uh, make people, seemed to be entertaining. So I did that for quite a while. And then people decided that I loved hot dogs. And that's the hot dog story. And that's why yeah. hot dogs are a mainstay of the AML nation. They are. And but for a buck fifty for a hot dog and you know, a, a soft drink, you can't beat it. Yeah, a dollar fifty for a Costco, you can get a hot dog and all the soda you can drink. Yeah, they still have that same deal out here. I know they oh, still yeah. have it here too. It hasn't changed. They, They'll they, never they have it in the UK, except it's a pound fifty over there. But yeah, uh, I, I, I doubt if it'll ever change because it became a, a, a mainstay of the AML nation. Yeah, there's a question in all this though. What's that? Do you actually like hot dogs? Sure. Who doesn't like hot dogs? Who doesn't like hot dogs? Okay. So you do like hot dogs? Absolutely. Oh, yeah. okay. Everybody what loves kind of hot kids dogs? like Hammer hot dogs? That's right. Shopsy's hot dogs are what I like. Shopsy's. Oh, Shopsy's are good. Yeah. Shopsy's are good. They're from Montreal. Yeah. yeah. I just wanted to make sure that you actually like hot dogs and it wasn't just something that somebody pinned on you. Yeah. Uh, well, I think people pinned hey, on Lionel, he, if you like the dogs, uh, next time you're into Foxes, get a box of their frozen dogs. They are really tasty. Are they? They're, they're combo pork beef dog with a little ah. bit of spice in them. Oh, and they're long. You need you need to get the Ooh, long sausage yeah, buns to go in because they'll oh. overhang each end of the normal hot dog. Bun. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah, they're very try a hot dog with bacon. Hot dog with bacon. bacon. You mm, hack them bacon and go. cheese is a beauty. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let me ask you a question, John. This is uh, going to determine pretty much where this uh, podcast ends up. <laughs> uh, when you're having your hot dog, John, do you like hot dogs, John? Sure. All right. When you're having your hot dog, uh, what kind of uh, condiments do you put on your hot dog? Well, I don't put ketchup on the hot dog. There you go. No one, and I mean no one, puts ketchup on a hot dog. After the age of eight. That's a joke. Yeah, you guys have all been brainwashed and you can't think for yourself, so there you go. <laughs> yeah. No, believe it or not, though, in all seriousness, I don't put condiments on my hot dogs. Really? Really, just eat them straight up. Wow. I don't play them. Yeah, you guys win a lot of baseball games. If yeah. you have all the if you have all the Pepsi you can drink, that goes really well with it too. Yeah. Holy mackerel. Yeah. That's He's a, a rebel. This guy's dog. a rebel. Yeah, that's man. It's just straight up. I don't know if I could take it's a like hot a dog. lumberjack hot dog. Yeah, a lumberjack hot dog. Yeah. There you I'm go. A, I'm original, man. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. This, uh, this is made me some narragage cool. hot dog. That's a narragage <laughs> hot dog right there. Yeah. Well, John, I think we're probably in the future we'll have to have you on again because I don't think we've uncovered all the secrets of TG, GSG Multimedia, but we've made a good start at it. Well, I'd be happy to come back sometime. Well, we'd be happy yeah. to have you. Yeah. And delve further into your model roading interests yeah, we, and things we like that. Barely even talked about that, and I was just working on a locomotive today. I was going to tell you about this mess I made on the other desk over here. All right, okay. what scale? What scale? <laughs> Oh, this was an HO scale. Model. Okay. Yeah. Do you have a layout? I don't have a layout. Okay. No. Yeah. I mean, I've, unless you count, unless you count the South Bay Historical Railroad Society, which that's you, the, which you uh, belong organization. to. Yeah, I belong to that organization, and I can go run trains on it any Tuesday or Saturday or almost any day of the week if I just ask someone to open the door for me. And what's the town you live in? I live in San Jose, California. Oh, so you live in San Jose? Okay. So you know the way. I do. <laughs> yeah. Um, Unfortunately, a lot of people do, and it's very crowded here. Oh, okay. <laughs> Time to move on. Yeah, but your house is worth $14 million. Yeah, pretty close. <laughs> so if you want to go do your layouts uh, somewhere else, here's well, the deal. Here's the deal, John. Here's <laughs> a, Here you go. I got to move. Move to Boise, Idaho. You'll be able to pocket 80% of what you sell your house for, and you'll be able to travel the country at will. I know. You know the downside, right? You're in Boise, Idaho. Yeah, and I don't, I don't mean look, I don't mean that as a knock on anywhere because you know I've thought about that. It's like, oh my god, I could sell my house and go move to Tennessee and live like a king, but then you're in Tennessee. But then so. you'd be in Tennessee, yeah. Yeah, and it's it's not saying something bad about Tennessee as much as it is saying something good about where I am now. Oh, so you like yeah, California? Live. You love California? Oh, well, I lived here my whole life. You're a native yeah, Californian. I am. We have great weather. Yeah. And you slide and, and great uh, every once in a while when you, when you need. Have you ever had a, have you ever been through an earthquake? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I go through earthquakes all the time. I don't feel most of them, but the last time I really felt an earthquake for real, uh, 
probably was 1989. We had a big one out here. You might have heard about that. The uh, the Bay Bridge was shut down because yeah. that's oh, yeah. the, during the World you know? Series. It was during, yeah, the, during World the World Series. Series. Yeah. It happened during the World Series. Yeah, I bet yeah. you didn't. I yeah. bet you didn't think October was so nice then. Yeah, that was my mom's birthday in 1989. Oh, wow. I'll never forget it. And I was sitting in my room wow. and I watched the floor in the house do the wave. It was crazy. Wow. Yeah, but I haven't really felt much after that. They're they're so commonplace here. It has to be a pretty big one for me to notice. Okay. Um, so, is your house yeah, built yeah. on um, on uh, bedrock or is it built on sand? Uh, you know, I don't know where we uh, live. I it's well, not landfill, so it's it's got to be. It's probably it's probably bedrock. Yeah. All right. Well, the next big uh, earthquake, you'll find out. The next yeah, six well, point oh, the next six point oh, that's near your house, you'll find out. Yeah. Well, that one, that one that we had was a 6.9 and yeah. it was about, I think 15 miles away, the epicenter wow. from where I lived at the time. Yeah. So you guys yeah, are caused lucky. A lot of, caused a lot of damage. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, um, yeah. Uh, well, Scott, can you give out our email address? Of course I can. Oh, if, well, excuse <laughs> me. <laughs> yeah. If you want to send us an email, you can send us one at modelerslife at gmail.com. One L like Lionel, not two like Greenville. Yeah, that's one L. Do, Lionel. do you want to try that again? Yeah, Lionel. No, has... It's one like Lister, not two like <laughs> Lionel. Yeah. No, there you go. Or one like there Lister, you. not two like Greenville. There you go. I yeah. didn't really want to use Greenville again. Okay. Well, people, how, what's the population of Greenville? What's the population of San Jose? About a million. Okay. Um, Give or take 100,000. And if you, if, uh, if uh, nobody, if you didn't catch that email address, if you go to our website, amodelerslife.com and you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see a picture of the moderately agitated male boy in a particularly agitated state. All you got to do is click on that picture and boom, you can send in an email that way. That's and what the that would be the easiest way to do it. Yeah. That's the easiest way to do it. Yeah. You click, click yeah. on the picture. It all pops up and away you go. Yeah. Man, I, that's what I should have said. Just get to that. No, we, on, no, because yeah. no, somebody no, has no. to give out the email somebody address. Somebody has to give it out. Okay. And then we got to talk about other ways to do it in case you weren't paying attention when right. you gave it out. Have you, have have you really ever, that one up, Scott, yeah. have you ever listened to the podcast? Of course. <laughs> okay. Well, then what you a question. You're talking to the table master. Here. Oh, yeah, that's good. He makes a solid Ooh. point there, Bruce. Well, he, he does. Yeah. yeah. Um, but apparently he's confused on the email address. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, he's, but of course table. he's, he's, he's got lots of responsibilities on making sure there's, you know, cases and cases of, uh, buckets of cheese balls ready for the table and all that. Yeah, stuff. So it's a big responsibility on his shoulders now. I think his yeah. biggest responsibility with the, being the table master is to make sure Chris Atkins isn't busting open the cheese balls. Man, that's gonna be really tough. You gotta watch that guy. Oh man, I'm telling you, that's a... what's up with the cheese ball fetish. You told me the hot dog. What about the cheese ball? They're funny. Yeah, that's it. That's it. What do you mean? That's They're funny. It? Don't don't you like it? Who, who's don't you like it? Did you ever watch Jerry Seinfeld? No. Do you watch any? Do you watch? Do you watch any comedy shows? Uh holy mackerel. That's a pretty uh, easy, that's I mean, a pretty straightforward question. Do you like things that make you laugh? Oh yeah. There you go, cheese balls. Yeah. And it's the same with odd numbers versus like 317 is much much funnier than 314. Okay. Odd numbers are always funnier. Okay. Always. Always. Okay. Um <laughs> You know, on the one hand, John, you kind of annoy, you kind of uh, uh, annoyed me. Oh no! Yeah, you know, there was a lot of questions coming <laughs> back at me. No, you don't like questions. No. Why not? No. Because that's why we're here to ans- ask them, not to answer them. Yeah, so we're not Jeopardy here. We're not <laughs> yeah, kidding. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I I need to learn about you too, don't I? No, you don't need to not, know. No, you, the, the the least the less you know, the better for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, you'll be much and, happier. And and, and and therapy is expensive, so yeah. Exactly. But, but I'm a naturally curious person. Well, there you well, go. There you go. Um, yeah. and oh, how about uh, going on? Yeah, that? we 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 done the Patreon. Click on me. Uh, Patreon. We need to talk about Patreon. With Patreon, yeah. If you if you don't feel like just signing up to the TSG Multimedia Patreon channel, if you go over to Modeler's Life, if you enjoyed this podcast, which is free every week, you get a free one on Monday. If you enjoyed this podcast and you'd like twice as much podcasting every week for uh, just sixteen three hundred and sixty five 
easy payments of 16 cents a day. You can have twice as much podcasting every week because there's one out every Tuesday that's available to our Patreon members. Now, we won't send out emails to some Patreon members about operating sessions and exclude other ones, like other podcasts. <laughs> <laughs> but but everybody's got that, uh, and uh, every, it's available to uh, everybody that wants to spend 16 cents a day. Um, and finally, John, have you ever wanted a t-shirt with a hot dog on it? Uh, I can't. The, the correct say answer I... is yes, John. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I've always wanted a hot dog t-shirt. Well, well, well it's Lionel got news for you. If you go to Midwest Model Railroad and their URL is MidwestModelRR.com and you go all the way across on the, uh, to the right hand side and click on the AML, uh, uh header, uh, boom, you'll be in a wonderland of merchandise, hats, hoodies, t-shirts, whatever you could possibly need. That's amazing. It really is. Sounds great. How can I order? We just told you. Go to Midwest Potter. Right? <laughs> <laughs> hey, consider consider the questions payback. Okay. Do, do you know what the do you know the, what they're payback for? No. My friend Drew Warrington tried to interview once, and all you did was ask him questions. Oh, okay. Do you remember him? Oh, of course, Drew's I remember a great Drew. young man. Yeah, yeah. he's a fine young man. I haven't seen much of him for a while, but yeah, I'm, of course, I remember him. Yeah, all you did was ask him questions. Well, I was trying to find uh, because because he's an interesting young guy. Well, you're an interesting old guy, so I had to ask some questions. Nah, I'm not that interesting. You see that? I'm I'm very consistent. Are you? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Sorry if I was annoying. I I tried to. No, be annoying you were fine. People, you were a great inter. Uh, you're a great interview. We're going to come back and have you on again. Oh, say well, hi to me. How to get up. Say hi to yeah. Michelle. Will you be telling everybody on your next talk and trains when it comes out, when you see that it's been released, will you be telling everybody on the next talking trains that, Hey, you got to go over to the AML channel and listen to this great podcast that I'm on. Yeah. I guess I need to figure out when it's coming out for real because well, you'll notice it. Yeah. You'll see it because if you're, I'm assuming you listen to all the podcasts and some of them twice. Well, I, I hate to disappoint you, but I work so hard so much that I don't watch or listen to much of anything. Okay. That's why, that's why when you ask me if I watch comedy shows, I'm like, well, not, I don't really watch much of anything. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> so are you, uh, are you boring? Yeah I, yeah. I don't know. You just talked to me for an hour and a half. Was I boring? Well, there were a couple of moments there where I kind of nodded off. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. But that <laughs> might be you though. That, that might be your problem. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Great, Scott. This is this, um, this is going in the wrong direction. <laughs> uh, well, I'm really disappointed that there's three guys I'm talking to, but I only talk to you, Lionel. What, what, why don't the other guys ask you questions or talk? I think Bruce asked a question. Sport, I right? asked a question. What did TSG stood for? We found out it was both oh, Stradivarius uh, and yeah, stuff. That's so, right. I'm sorry. What, what, you've forgotten that already? Yeah. I, wow. I told you I can't remember much. So this is coming out when in 2024 now? Yeah. yeah. Apparently you made, you didn't make quite, you made quite an impression yeah, just, on him there. Apparently. Just keep pushing yeah. it. Just keep pushing it back. Uh, okay. Now and, I, and I came up with the influence to soon for you and which nobody else was doing. So uh, I was, do... I was participating and being active. We're going to do a little poll uh, around the room, John. You're not part of it. See, the problem is when we had our huddle, you stuck your nose in and yeah. and we're part of that. And that's really, it was it was a private meeting and you just stuck your nose in on that. I, I forgot to turn the speakers off. Um, John, mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have a little uh, poll here and uh, you, you we'll, we'll just hang on there. Too. What do you think, Bruce? What do you think the chances are this goes smoothly? 30, mm, 70? Yeah, that's where I'm at too. It's a Scott. Where are you at? Sixty forty. Really? Eh? Ooh, you're pretty you're optimi optimistic. You're optimistic. Yeah, man. without a doubt. All right. So at the appropriate time, John, uh, you'll have to you have to say happy rails to you. Okay. Okay. You'll know when that is. So I, there's no. Okay. All you do is say with enthusiasm. You say happy rails to you. There's no okay. uh, no dancing, no singing, no interpretation, just an enthusiastic happy rails to you. Okay. Okay. Well, John, as we close the barn doors on another episode of A Modeler's Life and the sun slowly sets over the back 40, 
I guess there's nothing else left to do except for you to say. Uh, is this where you say it? Yeah, yeah. So you yeah, were see, way, Scott, Scott, you're way, way, way oh, too optimistic, wow. Scott. Wow. Yeah. I, 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 I almost got always it. look. Yeah. 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 Uh, see, if, if I listened, I, I would know the answer, but I didn't listen. Apparently. Well, he but, kind of set it right up for you. It was, it was like he set the baseball up on the tee for you to hit. You know? Yeah, like all I said to you is at the appropriate time, you have to say happy rails to you with enthusiasm. There's no singing. There's no dancing. There's no interpretation. Just with enthusiasm, say happy rails to you. And you'll know, assuming your IQ is higher than it's average. Not. Yeah. Uh, you'll know be, uh, when that. And, and he leads right into it. There's nothing left for, but for you to say. Yeah. So, I, I, it, and I almost, it's kind yeah. of set up like, here's the big target, you know, uh, <laughs> shoot at it. You know? Yeah. And I almost got it. But remember, I'm a drummer. So I'm the one usually setting up everybody else. Okay. So that's what happened. I, I just. Okay. Just, we'll give him that one. Try, mm. try it again. Try it again. Well, John, John Ring again? No, I'm not. That no, no. Sun goes down it, it, on the it, it, because I'd be down to about 1090 now. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I got it now. Yeah. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, we'll John. Out. Yeah, we'll find out. Well, John, as we close the barn doors on another episode of A Modeler's Life and the sun slowly sets over the back 40, I guess there's nothing else left to do except for you to say, Happy rails to you. That bordered on singing. Yeah, it was kind of marginally <laughs> adequate. Yeah. I thought it was okay. <laughs> oh, that was well. good. See, now I, I did it right, and all you guys can do is complain. Jeez. You didn't talk like that <laughs> during the whole show. You didn't. I was trying to be theatrical. What did I tell you? No was dancing. It, no, no interpretation. No interpretation. <laughs> oh, no interpretation. <laughs> That's the part that I missed. Yeah. Ah. Five ninety five. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, I hope you guys were taking bets because someone just made some money. Yeah. <laughs> so that's key. No interpretation. We're not that's interested. The part yeah, yeah, exactly. I'm, and I'm I bad said at it, instructions. And I said it several times too. Yes. I, I know, but I told you I can't remember much. So yeah. Let's you know. try one more time. See if let's do we'll really knock this one out of the park. Uh, okay, I'll try. All right. AML ending take three. Three. Well, John, I have a I have a slate here. Hold on a second. Can you can hear this. Take, yeah, take yeah, we can hear that. Great. Here. That, that was great. Yeah, that's perfect. There we go. Yeah. Well, John, as we close the barn doors on another episode of A Modeler's Life, <laughs> and the sun slowly sets over the back forty, I guess there's nothing else left to do except for you to say, "Happy trails to you." <laughs> <sighs> you did that on purpose. He did. No, that was I did it right that time. Amen. There's no, no interpretation. No. I just it's said it. happy rails, <laughs> not trails. What? Ah, this this isn't the Roy Rogers show. <laughs> okay, here, just edit this part in. This happy is making rails me look you. really good with the email. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Ha happy rails to you. Busted Knuckle, guests of a Modeler's Life podcast, stay at the Casa del Sol Motor Court and Inn, where late night dancing at the Rumber Room is a magical event to be experienced. It's another Lincoln Homer. There, you can just edit that part in. <laughs> okay. Are you going to edit this? We'll do it, yeah. Yeah, there'll be. You gonna edit yeah, this will yeah, oh, yeah. all be edited. Yeah, this will all be edited. Don't worry. Oh, about it. Okay, this is so just child's I, play here. Yeah. yeah. I, I almost cussed for a minute, and I didn't know if you were going to edit it or not, so I didn't say any, what I was going to say.
Okay, yeah, this is all edited. We do all we do extensive editing at the end after. Yeah. Oh yeah, before. there's lots of post production goes. Yeah, on. tons.